Okay, so I know it's been a long time since I've uploaded anything or recorded anything or really anything of that nature. Um, I've been trying to be active a little bit online, but um, there's just been a lot going on, so I haven't really been able to upload anything. Um, but I do want to do an update on some of my uh, palms around here because uh, I was watching another channel called The Palm Friend, I think is, is the name. Um, and he has a really, really great channel. He's in South Florida um, and has all kinds of updates on palm trees and just how to take care of them and all that kind of stuff. And you all know I'm like, I love palm trees. So um, this is kind of a video response to that, but it's also just an update on uh, how my palms are doing and how best to raise some palms in, uh, in Florida. So without further ado, here we go. So we're going to start with my favorite here. This is um, the Adeninia Marielli or also called the Christmas palm. And the reason that they would call it the Christmas palm is during the winter time, um, typically during December actually, uh, whenever they're actually in full maturity, which this one's not fully matured. I mean, it does have some trunk, but um, they'll start growing like some, uh, the bunctiliar bracts will start growing uh, their fruit and their fruit is like super bright red and it's pretty big. So it actually looks like little, um, almost like ornaments on a, on a Christmas tree. So they give it, the Christmas palm. It's really bright um, colored. So uh, the Adeninia though is a pretty popular fan favorite of a lot of Florida um, landscapers I guess you could say. It's used quite a bit mostly in South Florida. Uh, I love these ones though so I've got quite a few. Um, these two are probably my healthiest um, just by the fact that the the leaflets are extremely dark green um, they're very like healthy. They're not ratty. They're not getting frizzle top uh, They're just full and the trunks themselves are super thick um, By I'd say about at least three inches um, and definitely around four to five at the base. So Love these ones by far my my favorite palms that I have um, So these would be a solid mm, zone 10 I'm in zone 9B, so I'm getting away with it, but I would say 10A, 10B, 11, very, very tropical palms. Um, this one, this is, uh, let's see, Hyophorbe lenincollis. Um, so this is the bottle palm, which this one is actually not um, fully mature. So it doesn't actually have the trunk yet. All of this is just the crown shaft, even though it doesn't have that bright green like the crown over there. Um, this one's been kind of scratched up and uh, has yet to really form that really beautiful <laughs> green crown shaft that most uh, high four base have. So this one would still be a juvenile. It's finally starting to grow a new a new uh, merit stem right there coming out of the heart. But it's been doing pretty well. This one is also a zone 10A, solid 10A, 10B. Again, it's up here in St. Augustine, but it's growing pretty well. So I'm getting away with it. So then we move over here, we've got um, the Majesty Palm. And the Majesty Palm uh, is a fan favorite for a lot of like zone 9B, 9A kind of uh, people just because it's very full and it's foliage. Um, the leaflets uh, grow pretty well. It just requires a lot, a lot of water. So like these things you can grow in very swampy areas and it'd be totally fine, which is why this one does pretty well because this is actually a bit more low lying than anywhere else. And so that gives it that very green uh, look. I have another one uh, over in the front that is at a dry area and you'll actually see the difference between the leaflets on this one versus the leaflets on that one. All right, so these are my two little baby uh, coconut palms. I've got three others that are a bit more matured. They're not mature yet, but they're more mature. Um, coconut palms are probably the most identical palm trees out there. They are extremely tropical, and so they have a pretty interesting grow uh, cycle, but also are a bit mm, picky on where they grow and how they grow. I've got a full video on just coconuts themselves so you can jump over to that video if you really want to hear more about coconuts but these ones are doing quite well and this is uh again in zone 9b up in st augustine so um i i don't know a whole lot of coconuts that have grown up here but i'm definitely gonna keep trying and um so far my coconuts have not died yet 
right, these are my other coconut palms. These ones are a whole lot more, uh, I don't even want to say healthy, they're just older. Um, this one is definitely the oldest, as you can see, the leaflets have completely split. Um, this is what they'll start looking like when they're in full foliage and um, as it actually reaches maturity, which is still very much a juvenile. In fact, the coconut itself is still there, and typically when they get older, they will outgrow their coconut completely. Um, but this one has been here for about two years now, I want to say. This one's been about a year and this one has been about two years but um it is just a little bit smaller hasn't really divided those leaflets as much it's starting to but still has a little bit of a ways to go so coconuts again super super uh, tropical they're not extremely cold hardy so i'm uh i'm pushing it with these guys but we typically don't ever get down below freezing i mean maybe once a year maybe twice a year will we actually freeze so I'll just be sure to wrap up the uh, 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 crown shaft and wrap up the merit stem and we will be pretty good. Uh, let's see, so another Adninia Marielli, um, followed by another Adninia Marielli. I love this one that's finally starting to grow a little bit of trunk as I can see down here. Uh, but it's kind of thin compared to the other ones. This is like maybe an inch and a half. Uh, about maybe three inches down here at the base, so I'm waiting for it to get really really full One of the things I love about the Adninias is like they grow so quickly So you almost always have a new spear coming out Almost always even when one starts to separate and become full as it does here. Look at that We already have a new spear before this one even divides so They're super super fast growers uh, Over here we have a little Phoenix Robolini um, here we have a larger Phoenix Robolini. So this one's a single uh, compared to most Phoenix Robolinis that are going to be in uh, pods. So they'll have like tri or double or quads. Um, good example would be this guy over here. So this is a pretty mature Phoenix Robolini that's been here for I'd say I think around nine years. Maybe, maybe more of seven actually. Uh, but it's definitely producing a lot of fruit and seed here um, in fact I think this one in the back is just starting to put a pedunculier bract out and that is essentially that bract is just where the seed comes from uh, nope I think it's already spawned them actually but typically what they'll do is it'll be a very fat sack that starts growing out and then it'll open up and the seed will be inside and when the seeds begin to fall on the right kind of soil they will produce little baby palm trees which these are tiny phoenix robolinis that are just saplings just starting to sprout so my palm is growing little babies i'm super happy about it and this is what we call uh, varicose uh, varicose uh, the, uh, the word escapes me um, roots varicose roots which essentially it's trying to let itself dry out from all the moisture that's trapped under here it tries to get a little bit of aeration going on so it doesn't saturate itself and as you can see the petiole here is a lot more full grown until it actually reaches the leaflets um, and this is a byproduct of not getting a whole lot of water this area all the water wants to drain off into the culvert and so it doesn't actually water the palm as much and so the problem is these leaflets are, as you can see, super thin compared to the other ones. Um, they're getting some frizzle top on top, and they're just they're just not as full as they should be. In fact, a lot of the fronds die rather quick because they kind of dry out compared to that one over there that lasts quite a bit longer. Um, so, if you get yourself uh, a Majesty Palm, first off, they're great for uh, like borders they're very full whenever they actually have a lot of water but um, you just have to make sure that they're in an area that's going to be pretty saturated uh, moving on so another Adninia Marielli these ones are far more mature um, as you can see like the trunk itself from the crown shaft down is probably about a foot and a half just not as thick see you know it's only only like an inch and a half in, diam er, in diameter you know, I like the other ones, that's why I say the other ones uh, by the pool are actually more healthy because they're a whole lot more beefy compared to these. I don't think these, uh, when I got them, 
from the nursery, I, I don't think they were as um, fertilized, and so they weren't growing up in some rich areas. They were just kind of like deprived a little bit, but they're still gorgeous, um, still doing really well. Again, growing a whole lot of spears. That's why I love them is because they're almost always, every time you look at a at Ninia, it will almost always have a spear. Almost always. I've never really seen one that's like around the the crown doesn't have a merit stem coming out. It's it's always got at least a little stub, some kind. Um, so there's another Majesty poem, and this one this one is a, one of my favorites as well. Uh, this is called Codomitis, uh, and Codomitis is essentially a fishtail poem. But the fishtail poem is an interesting one, and in the fact that its actual leaflets here uh, are not exactly palmate or pinnate. They're more of a um, bipinnate, where they branch off of the frond itself. So they branch off the petiole onto another petiole, and then there's the actual leaves, versus a lot of regular pinnate palms that just have the straight leaflets based off of the petiole itself. Really cool palms. They grow super clustered, and so they're really good for like having some kind of border if you ever want like to let's say I have this whole area that's open if I want it to look like that over there where it's like super covered then I can put a bunch of Um so here we have uh, your normal um, palmetto uh, it looks almost like it's gonna be a Bismarck but it's more of just a regular palmetto that's pretty mature uh, this one I would say is somewhere around 12 years old uh, they don't grow super super fast when we're talking growing vertically but they're growing super fast in the fact that they always almost have um, some fronds out in the open. Uh, and real quick, actually, this one is a good example of a um, Acosta palmate frond. And the reason why we say that is because the frond itself is palmate to where it's like a palm, it's open. Um, but it's got this little uh, hook here, almost like a, like a, a shoehorn. And uh, the fact that the frond still continues to come up and then slowly branch out into the, uh, the leaflets makes it a costa palmate instead of one that's just regular, straight, um, palmated, uh, spread out. I don't know if I have an example here that I could show you because most of my other palms are pinnate, but if I could, I'll see if I can find one. Um, so this is a cycad, uh, just a, a sago palm, which isn't actually a palm, it's more of a cycad. Palms are monocots, in which case cycads grow a little bit differently. I won't go into all that right now. Um, but let's see what else we have. Another uh, Adninia marielli. This one is still a juvenile, but it's finally starting to grow a little bit of trunk down here. Actually, it's pretty fat too. But uh, yeah, these are really cool because they, they normally self-clean themselves, meaning at which when an old frond dies, uh, it will typically just fall off on its own once it reaches maturity, but when they're still juveniles like this, a lot of times you have to peel them away. Uh, Phoenix Robolini, I think this one is a five or four to it, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, this one's been growing for about two years now. Starly, fi Starly finally starting to fill out, actually grow. Uh, another Cycad, another Cycad. Uh, this one's another phoenix, but surprisingly that one and this one are the same age. This one's just been growing a whole lot faster. And I think that has to do with just the way that the water pull, pulls up at the bottom of it, getting a little bit more nutrients, and I've also been fertilizing this one a little bit more. Uh, okay, so this is a um, Roman Cygris Romancephilia, and essentially that is just a queen palm. So if everyone says queen palm, super common in Florida, um, really it's... Cygris romancephilia, uh, and there's two kinds. There's this one, which is the uh, Queen Peru, which is different than that one in the background, which we'll go over and look at later. But this one is essentially a whole lot, um, I normally say thinner. Uh, the trunks aren't normally as thick as those guys, plus they grow a little bit differently in the fact that their uh, boot markings uh, as they grow in age are very thin and um, it doesn't have like a crown shaft. It still has that very rugged uh, booted up shaft, but at the same time, like it, it cleans itself as it grows versus those ones you typically have to take the boots and manually cut them or pull them off to give it that cleaner look. 
Um, both are very healthy, both will grow in zone uh, 8A, 9A, 9B, all the way down to 11, um, but they're a little bit more cold hardy. So you'll typically see these a little bit more in um, like the northern Florida region. Uh, this is another one, uh, same kind of thing. It's been growing pretty well. I did have some spear blowout from the hurricane, but it's finally been starting to grow back. Super glad to see that. Uh, Phoenix Robolini, this one's just got like six. Uh, so it's a hex chunk and hex pod. And I haven't cut it back because I like it to get as much growth as possible. And I'll eventually cut it back. Um, story behind this, I had another... Uh, Queen Peru right here, but it got what's called pink rot, which means that basically a bug infestation ate it up from the roots all the way through the trunk. It was super, super dead. So I finally had to just pull it out and I will hopefully be replacing it relatively soon. Um, that's why you definitely want to make sure you fertilize your palms and prep the ground around them. Otherwise, uh, pests will definitely seek them out. And what they do a lot of times is the pests will live inside the boots and will live inside the crown and they'll just start eating it up from the inside out. Really, really bad. So you can typically tell um, whenever uh, you see a lot of brown or a lot of light green or yellowish around the, uh, the new spear or if you see it just around the crown itself, that's not a good sign. You need to get in there and start kind of cleaning it out. You can always use like hydrogen peroxide, all kinds of stuff to clean it. Okay, so here's a Bismarck. Um, like I said, the other one, the uh, Palmetto, kind of resembles one, uh, but they typically don't grow uh, the same. Obviously, it's a different uh, genus and species altogether. Still palm, but a uh, different style of palm. But they both are uh, Acosta palmate. Um, they both have uh, some somewhat of armed petioles. They've got those razors up there that they're not like real, real thick spines, but they are... Um, serrated and they both grow really well in just natural out in the woods whether they have sun whether they have shade whatever it is and here would be a good example of one this one's doing really well even though it's kind of like hindered under under some other trees uh, it's just growing here naturally in fact I'd love to transplant both of these into the front yard but we'll see if I can ever actually do that so here we have another Adninia Marielli um, this one's actually a newer addition to uh, the rest of my palm collection. Um, I'm always looking for another Adninia because I, I get them on sale a lot of times. Um, and so I couldn't resist, I had an empty spot. Actually, there used to be a bush here and it was just ugly and I hate bushes with a passion. So I yanked it out, threw it in the woods and let it die. And uh, here we go, beautiful palm. <laughs> um, but this one over here, this is a, an Arica palm. And areca palms, most people think of as being indoor palms, at least whenever um, you're out of zone 10A, because they are pretty uh, cold. Uh, they're not very cold hardy. They're not very frost resistant. And so um, this one I do have here a little bit closer to the house so that it can block uh, some of the wind, and the house itself will also admit a little bit of heat. Um, again, it's it's not like you know, we ever freeze that much. It's still Florida here, okay, and we're by the coast, so uh, typically it'll stay around definitely the 60s and um, the 50s at night. Very rarely will we drop to the 30s, but we will get one or two uh, in, the, in the 30s uh, a year. And so um, this palm grows extremely aggressively. Uh, it grows typically very tall um, whenever they're actually at maturity this is still a juvenile um, but they also cluster like no one's business like they will invade themselves and as you can see the the trunk here really isn't much of a trunk this is just the crown shaft um, there's a lot of them like there's already a whole cluster of them but as they continue to grow they will just begin to drop seed and drop seed and and just sprout on their own they're um, what we call voluntary sprouters which means that a seed will fall off and on its own it will begin to uh, get covered with dirt or dig into the dirt and start uh, actually germinating, producing some roots and start growing. You don't have to force it. That would be involuntary, meaning at which you're forcing it. But a voluntary seed is one that will drop off the plant, kind of like that um, uh, Phoenix Robolini back there that was producing little babies. That's voluntarily growing. It's on its own. Um, but this one, 
this one will do it like no one's business. I mean, they will just, just, just grow super quickly, you know? So a lot of times you'll see these, um, actually with a lot of trunks, uh, cut off and just like completely hacksawed because, uh, as they start to grow, they grow out of control and people want to keep them kind of tame. So this one I'll definitely be transplanting eventually. Right now I have it by the house, uh, just as it's a juvenile. But I mean, if this thing starts going crazy, uh, it's gonna like be all over the house and that's not a good thing, but I love Eureka palms They have more like a bamboo kind of look to the trunk whenever they're mature um, But they're just they grow super quick. They grow super aggressively The only problem with them is they're just not super cold tolerant. So as long as you're in zone like 10a um, You'll be fine 9b. I'm gonna make it work. Definitely Okay, so this one is the normal um, Cygris Romans Ophelia. And as you can tell, it's a lot taller, it's a lot bigger, it's a lot beefier. Um, I actually had to cut one of the fronds from the hurricane, and so it died, sadly. It was up against the house, and that's not very good. So, um, I actually like this uh, species a little bit, little bit better. Um, they're the same genus, but this one is a different species. And the only reason I like this one better is they grow a little bit faster. And they also typically um, just grow a little bit more beefy, a little bit more sturdy versus um, those cygris. Uh, so this one's been here for, oh gosh, seven years, maybe eight, probably eight years actually. But as you can see in eight years, that's how big it is. Like, and I'm not saying eight years from seedling, I'm saying eight years that it's been really here. Um, that's still saying a lot because it used to be about the size of that. Um, this is another one that I planted recently uh, that's probably eh, four years old, maybe five. Um, doing just as well as this one, but as you can see, like it hasn't grown a whole lot of trunk yet. So technically, this guy, even though he's big, would still be classified as a juvenile just because it doesn't have a trunk. So it hasn't reached maturity that much yet. Uh, another Phoenix Robolini. Uh, I think that one's a four cluster. Um, and now this one, this is interesting. This is a uh, Adeninia marilelli again. However, it's a whole lot more healthy than some of my other ones. And I grew it from just a very baby little juvenile. Um, it was about this tall. And so, you know, there wasn't any kind of trunk showing. There was barely even any of the, the crown showing at all out of the ground. It was just a little guy. But it has grown super well in the shade here. And that's because a lot of times as a juvenile, it will like the shade. It doesn't want to be burned by the sun too much, even though it loves the heat. Um, I think it's doing super well because it's in the shade here by the house. What else we got? Uh, this is a queen that I dug up from out in the woods and hoping it comes back, but it also had some damage from the hurricane. So we'll see. Um, moving on to the final ones. Uh, more Hydrophorbe lenicollis, Hydrophorbe lenicollis, again, uh, the bottle palm, they grow pretty, pretty slowly, honestly, but, uh, they're super, super, super durable, and, uh, not very cold hardy, though, so, like, you could have a lot of wind damage on these guys, and because they're so thick, the petioles, like, you can bend these forwards, backwards, and sideways, and they're not really gonna be damaged, um, they just don't really do super well in the cold. These ones, I'm sure we'll probably do fine though, just because if need be, I'll protect them. And again, it really doesn't get that cold. Um, maybe down to the mid 30s, but not too much more from there. Uh, this is Woodyetia bifurcata, and that is essentially the foxtail palm. Now, foxtails have grown super popular here in Florida and just all around the world, really. Uh, they started out in Australia, and then they got exported from there and started getting really popular in the US uh, around the early 2000s. But it's kind of rare that you'd find a triple. Normally they just come in a single trunk. And so this one I found in South Florida and I drove it up here and uh, planted it myself just to make sure I could get myself a, a triple. Um, they're doing really well, but these are what you would call um, bipinnate, meaning at which the leaves, uh, or sorry, plumos, plumos, the leaves themselves grow off the petiole in more than just like um, straight lines or patterns. They grow every single direction, as you can see over here. They kind of like go up and down and sideways and left and right.
And of course, I couldn't forget my two prized possessions here. Um, they're both saplings. Well, I wouldn't even say saplings. They're just juveniles at this point. Um, but this is Ristonia regia, um, or basically the Cuban royal palm, which is abundantly everywhere in South Florida. Uh, they will do okay in uh, zone 9b, but um, you just have to be careful while they're still juveniles to protect them a little bit. They're pretty cold hardy though, um, but they are so gorgeous, just very uh, prime tropical palms that you'd see all over Cuba and South Florida, the Keys, other than of course um, your uh, coconut palms. Love the Regionia Regia. Uh, or Estonia, Regia, uh, Royal Palm. So, uh, this one is more of a collector favorite. This is Chamberonia macrocarpa, which is essentially uh, the flamethrower palm. I looked all over for this one. Nurseries here, nurseries in West Palm Beach, everywhere. But I couldn't find it, and I finally had to order it off eBay of all places. And they did ship it here. Um, so, the beautiful thing about this palm is whenever it starts to grow, and it's a little bit more a little bit more mature, the um, spear will come out bright, bright red. Really, really pretty where it gives that kind of flamethrower look. Um, these are actually pretty cold hardy because if you if you look at the um, the frond here, the leaflets, they're pretty oiled up and so that extra leathery kind of oil on it gives it some protection from the cold. It's just like having thicker skin, imagine. Um, they also call this the window pane palm just because like it's got that kind of window pane open a v to it but uh chamberonia macrocarpa essentially definitely um if you can find these in seed the seed will be massive in fact uh, macrocarpa meaning big seed or uh, massive seed uh, huge seed <laughs> the, the seeds are huge uh, about the size of a large marble but um, if you ever want to uh, collect these you can get them online or you can obviously get them from seed i think at this point the seeds are a little bit cheaper but um, you might as well just go, and I, I got this one for like $20 online, which I, you think $20 is kind of a lot for a palm, even whenever it's still a little baby, because it was definitely not as old as this. Uh, but yeah, uh, they're kind of rare, so I figure you might as well have to search for it. Um, they're originally from Madagascar, if I remember correctly, though, so um, you gotta figure they gotta kind of export them all over, and now they grow pretty, uh, originally even in places like Florida and so they can actually raise them in Florida and you're not always getting them from Madagascar but their origin was over Madagascar so as they started to get more popular then they started to export them and spread them around to different tropical regions and uh, yeah so definitely gonna keep keep up with these two guys all right y'all so that'll do it for me in the palms I am getting just swarmed and eaten up by mosquitoes right now um, so I'm about to take a break from all of this. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments about any of these palms, um, then for sure, please let me know. We'd love to be able to get y'all's comments on this and be able to answer whatever I can. Also check out uh, the Palm Friend. Um, I will have a link to his channel in the description below and also right here. So you can go ahead and click on that and check out his channel. He's got a lot of good information and I'd say he's much more of a botanist than I am. I just do this as a hobby. He actually does it as a career, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, and thanks a lot for watching. Enjoy the tropics.